Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, I guess this is workday six on the deliverer. We got the ABS modules in the mail. I uh, filled up the gas tank so it could leak and I could find that link. And uh, I'm going to get started with the ABS module if the motor's not too hot. Then I'm going to do the odometer gear and go from there. Okay, I filled up the deliverer and it started leaking right as I filled it up. It's still dripping a little bit. So I'm going to figure out where that's leaking from and get that repaired. Because of how I parked on this driveway slant, the fuel tank's leaking right now. So that should be easy for me to find once I get to that point. As I was putting this ABS module in, I was bumping these wires around and the coating came right off of them. Volvo used to have a problem with that with the old mid-80 cars, so I guess this is the same thing here. So I'm going to tape those wires up. Hopefully they won't touch and shorten nothing out and plug that ABS connector on. I put some silicone tubing on those bare wires, taped them up, and connected the connectors so the ABS module's in. We'll see if that code goes away on its own. You shouldn't have to reset it. Now I'm going to pull the dash pad off, pull the glove box, disconnect the um, airbag. I'm not going to disconnect the battery to see if that trips the light. I'm going to fix the cluster and I'm going to leave the mileage where it is. If the new owner wants me to roll the mileage up to where it should be, I will. But for now, I'm going to just reset it where it is and put all that stuff back together. I'm also going to replace the bulbs behind this cluster because several of those are out. You have to remember that the dash is fragile and brittle, so you can't go rough housing it. And before you go jerking the stuff around, there's a cap over it over the screw head here pull that pull that then just use the video link below to get the dash pad off i have the passenger side airbag disconnected and as you can see the power is still on so that should trip the srs light and somebody has creatively extended this button on this glove box because i guess it was staying open and draining the battery so let me go ahead and pull those four bolts and lift this dash pad out Try to be as gentle as possible when lifting this dash pad up because this black trim that goes all the way across the front of the dash, that usually breaks at this age when somebody pulls this dash pad out. There's one crack in it, trying not to create more. The hardest part of getting this dash pad up once all the screws are out is to get in this airbag lip over this part of the glove box uh, frame. So I started on the driver's side, worked my way over to the passenger side, and it looked like I did very little, if any, damage to that part of the dash up there. Maybe one more crack here. Now I have full access to the cluster. I'm going to unplug the cluster, unplug the turbo boost gauge, and pull it out and replace the gear and the bolt. There's the little gear broken up. If you're ever in the junkyard and you're bored and you take one of these apart, if the gear is yellow, it's probably an old one about to break. If it's white, it's been replaced. And that's what the replacement white one looks like. Here are the four light bulbs that light this up. And then, of course, there's two in here that lights this up. So I'm going to test those light bulbs and make sure they work. If not, uh, replace them. I put some plastic glue on that. So the instructions say to hold it in place for two hours. So hopefully it'll hold. I'm going to go to lunch, come back, and see if it's strong enough to hold that uh, latch in place for the cluster. Okay, I got most of the dash back in place. I plugged in the airbag. I'm going to start the car and see if I have an SRS light. If I don't, I'm going to unplug the uh, airbag to set it, and then I'm going to try to reset it with my tool. So here we go. No ABS light, no SRS light. So let me go ahead and unplug that to set it off. And then I'll try to reset it with my tool. Well, 
something's wrong. I just unplugged my airbag and my car's not setting the light off. Let me see if the light bulb works. Yes, the light bulb works. But for some reason, my airbags are not setting the light off. I have the dash back together, but I have a little uh, screw out here because I'm going to try to get a bracket made to pull this dash against the firewall and maybe that'll stop some of the other mounts from breaking so let me work on getting that bracket my priority right now is dealing with this fuel leak so let me go ahead empty this trunk out see if I could deal with this fuel leak and go from there okay from what I could tell there's two hoses that go around the gas tank uh, fuel pump access you have the smaller one there and the larger one there. They come here and they go around the fuel tank access and then they go up to the top of the tank up by the sending unit. I'm wiggling on the smaller one and the larger one is right under it there. And when I put gas in there, this larger one leaks. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that hose replaced. Get one from the dealer. Leaks out of that upper hose. Runs down and puddles down there. Okay, I'm going to try to pour some gas in there. And film this without knocking this camera over. While I pour gas in there. Alright, that should be it. If I'm not mistaken, somebody on Matthew's site drilled a hole in this floor and replaced this hose. So I'm going to check that thread and see what it'll take to get that piece of the hose replaced or whatever needs to happen there to get that fixed. Next, I'm going to vacuum out the bottom of this um, trunk here. It looked like something was living and nesting back here. I did chase a spider from back here, but man, something was laying a lot of eggs back here at one time. Next, I cleaned out the drains that go down through the trunk if the car is leaning forward. This, of course, will allow water and snow and ice and stuff to drain off. And they're connected to tubes. They have tubes back there, and they drain under the car. So you could pour water in them and see if they're draining properly. But these were plugged up with debris, so I cleaned them out, vacuumed them out. Now I'm going to pour water in them, see if they drain out the bottom of the car. So, here we are. Pour water in. And as you can see, the water drips on the ground, so they're clear. The one on this side is not clear, so I'm going to push a zip tie down there. It'll be less likely to damage any of the hoses. Okay, I have about an hour left. So what I'm going to do now is pull that wheel and jack this side of the car up and check this uh, control arm. And if it's bad, I'm going to replace it. If not, I'm going to pull the wheel on the other side and replace that one. Well, the driver's side control arm is good. So when I do the timing belt and remove that passenger side tire, I'll replace that control arm. And for now... I'm going to finish the interior cleaning, and I have a couple of bits I need to install. That panel there that goes under the dash, I have a replacement door panel here, since this one's kind of cruddy. And then I'll be done with the interior and pick up tomorrow. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.